before we get into it, I just want to mention that all the code and uh, examples that I'll be going through is on a blog post at learncreategame.com slash techart slash Houdini Heightfield Normals. So uh, you can even download the final result, which is going to be an uh, HDA that generates a normal map from uh, a height field. So here's a really simple setup that we're going to use as an example. So it's basically a height field uh, with some noise on it. And then we ran some height field erosion for 20 seconds. And it's basically the default erosion. So now we have something to work with. Uh, I'm going to turn off the visualization here so we don't get those colors. So uh, here's our out height field. So basically this is going to end up being a digital asset in the end. So we're not even going to... Um, uh, we, we don't we don't really care about the height field portion. We're going to take that as an input. It's going to be some height field. But here's kind of the traditional way of baking a normal down. So you would convert the height field into a low mesh and you would convert the height field into a high mesh. And then you would basically plug in the low and the high and run it through a bake. So here's the result of, of that normal map. So this process uh, requires you to have a mesh. There's a faster baker, but I think that one also expects an, a mesh as an input. Uh, and if we middle mouse button click on the high res here, so we can see that um, it's taking up seven gigs of memory. Uh, it cook happened pretty quick, but it, the draw in the viewport is pretty slow when I turn it on. So uh, we're not gonna do this so we're going to find an alternate way of of uh, basically generating a normal map from from the height field data itself without having to convert it to polygons so uh, here's the overview of the whole thing and um, i'm going to be give a big shout out to uh, paul ambrosian uh, he's also linked in the blog post uh, he helped me out with figuring this out we have an incoming height field. Uh, this node basically, to make it more generic as a, as a tool later on, we're basically going to collapse all of this into a uh, Houdini digital asset with a height field input. So this node right here ensures that we have a mask. Uh, we just take the height as a source and basically create an empty layer, uh, an empty volume that is a mask if it doesn't exist. And then we're doing some cleanup because you don't, really know what's going to come in here it could be a maybe there oh yeah see uh, i ran the erosion so there's a number of uh, volumes that comes with the erosion so here we're basically cleaning up everything except for that height and the mask and here we're creating the, a color um, a color attribute uh, copying the mask to a cd rgb for color red green blue and so here is our um, prepared height field so to speak and then we're going to use a height field resample um, to basically downsample the height field. And that way we're going to use the, the high res, quote unquote, as the regular height field that comes in here. And the low res as a downsample. Downsampling is really, really fast. And uh, if you're wondering this switch node right here, we're going to give the user the ability to basically toggle a switch on the digital asset to say that they want to generate a normal map that is basically comparing the height field to a flat height field so i don't even know what the term for that is but it's like the full normal difference between the high res and zero uh, as opposed to the normal uh, the relative difference of a low res and a high res so the next part is uh, where the magic really happens uh, we're going to have two sections that are basically identical uh, this handles the low res uh, height field and this handles the, the one that's coming in, the high res height field. But these two sections are identical. Um, these nodes actually over here are reference nodes of these guys so that they're just instances of nodes. So if something changes on this node, it will change over there too. These two nodes on either data track here, so to speak, uh, this one just kind of cleans out. So we're only left with the height and the color attributes on the on the volume and this one where we're only left with height so this side right here um the i found these nodes in the uh where you can mask by slope uh in the height field 
basically they had to find figure out the normal in that node to be able to generate a mask based on normal angles so this is the way it was done in the the node that was kind of shipped with houdini so they inserted a volume blur and um, and then uh, computing a gradient and the gradient is basically putting a normal on the voxels uh, so we're going to, in our digital asset, we're going to let the user sort of drive the, the radius uh, and the number of passes of, this, of the volume blur, allowing you to kind of smooth out the normal map a little bit if you want. Uh, and this is just a straight up uh, computation of the gradient. And uh, the next step is where Paul really, really helped out a lot with a, the with a math of figuring out the, the normal it's worth noting that when you feed in the height field, the height volume into a gradient, uh, out comes three, uh, three different volumes. So the height is split up into an X, Y, Z. So in the code here, we're building three different vectors, an X, Y, and a normal vector. And we're setting the X, one and Y, zero, and then we're flip-flopping it down here for Y. And we're reading in the geometry coming into this port right here. We're basically sampling a value from geometry one, which is zero, one, this port, this geometry. And we're reading from the X volume of the gradient. And this is the index number of the current voxel. So we're reading the value from the X uh, of the of the gradient volume here and in the next step we're reading it for the um, the y so the two vectors x and y uh, the normal we we compute the cross product which is the vector perpendicular to these two which is going to be the the normal vector and then we normalize that in case it's larger than than uh, one and then we're basically writing this vector to uh, our CD color. And uh, in the digital asset, we're gonna give the user uh, an option to, f uh, to flip the X and the, the, or the red and the green channel of the normal map basically. And we're in the end, we're basically gonna fill the blue channel with the value of one. So that is done both on the low and the high res side. And both of those are then fed in and we can basically um, subtract the, the, the low res from the high res and we are left with a difference of the normal. And so um, you can just jump over here to the composite view and if we highlight this, uh, we can see the normal map for this height, height field. And I mean, it didn't really take any time at all and we're actually going to set the gamma here so you can see the true sort of color output of it. So if I go in here and uh, just set the blur radius to something really high, you can see that it's already recomputed. Like it is so fast in comparison to baking. Baking, I think, took uh, on this machine for 4K map took around a minute and a half. And this takes like a split second and almost no memory whatsoever. So um, we're taking the result of this guy and reading it into a COP network. And the COP network is pretty simple. Uh, we're importing the, uh, the out normal there, the out in the SOP into a SOP import node. And we're setting the size to be the volume resolution. Import the CD as a custom plane and uh, of the float 32 bit type. Uh, and then uh, we go through and rename the planes from CD to the COP standard color. And basically this is a null and then we just feed this into a, a, an out uh, and uh, I don't think I touched actually this should definitely be set to LZV compression otherwise the TIFF files get ginormous. You render this out uh, you can see how long this will take and it's rendering right now and it's done it's written to disk so I think the disk write is really the, what takes a, a split second there but I really think this is an awesome way to go about it. Let me show you the digital asset version of this now. Uh, so 
Uh, I've collapsed all those nodes basically into a digital asset, normal from height field. And uh, that's kind of what we're seeing here being drawn in the viewport. Uh, we can minimize this guy. So you'll see how interactive this is. So first of all, let's zoom in a little bit here. So if we, this is a 4K uh, height map being generated, so we can flip the X here and flip the Y, which is kind of what we had in our working example. Uh, we can start smoothing the map a little bit and boom, recomputed. I mean, it's, it's nice and fast. I love this. It's kind of fun to be able to sit and, uh, and sort of play with your normal map like this and plug in sort of any, any height map into the, that input. And we can also set from, uh, so here, here's the, f the, the one I was talking about on the switch. So if we switch this, now it's the full normal map from, from basically a flat plane going all, all the train undulations and features being computed. Uh, and then you can set the, the resolution scale here to basically increase or decrease like your lowest resolution. So the more you increase it, the closer it will get to the high res normal and basically be nothing. And the more you decrease it, the, the stronger the normal features are going to be. Again, you can, uh, you can download this digital asset uh, on the blog post and you can sort of pick it apart and do whatever you want with it yourself. Uh, I hope this was useful. Uh, I know that when I was sort of trying to um, figure this out, there wasn't much information on the subject. So I hope this will help somebody that uh, is kind of uh, thinking the same thoughts that I was. Cheers. And if you liked this video, please subscribe and give it a thumbs up and I'll see you in the next one. <laughs>